And let's go play as Mom's Friendly Robot Company. We're gonna play as a Megacorp. Done. Uh, what are we gonna do? We set everything to default. We'll go large. We're not gonna go huge. We'll go large. It's gonna be okay. Um, as a Megacorp, we kind of, we don't expand quite as wide as others. I think we'll benefit from having more empires spawn at the start of the game. So, you know, more potential customers. I think that's going to be okay. Um, I talked about making some changes here. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up the difficulty for the, because it's new, like I, I'm still new to 2.2 and everything's changed. I'm not going to go all the way to Grand Admiral. I'm going to go to Commodore. I will turn on scaling difficulty. So everyone will start at the same difficulty level, but the AI will get more and more bonuses as the game goes on. I think they hit their maximum difficulty um, at the mid game start year. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down a scooch. So this will arrive a little earlier, which means the difficulty will scale a little faster. Um, I'm also going to bring down the end game start year to like 2350. So it'll be a slightly shorter thing because what's happened in the past, we've just dominated the galaxy super, super, super fast. Um, advanced AI starts. Yeah, maybe we'll turn that off. We'll keep Fallen Empires, but turn off the Fallen, the, the, the advanced AI starts. Um, so everyone will start on the same level, but there'll be more of them. And then they're going to get stronger over time. Random's fine. Um, I think everything else can mostly stay where it is. Make sure you set force spawn. We did set force spawn, I think, for everything. Hold on. Oh, 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 sorry. Force spawn. Um, do I want to force spawn everyone else? I'm just reading Cat Empire. Should we just do that so that we're always using our own races? Change them around from time to time. Here, we'll leave off the Serene Cat Empire because we're going to have the Sacred Order of Kuda instead. We'll have the Robot Fanboys. We'll have the Cuddlers. Screw it. There. It's going to be filled with all of our people. It's going to be okay. All right. Um, someone said something like uh, Habitable World Scaling. Where was that? Habitable worlds, bring it down. I think Future Arm Advisors mod is great. I, I was using it for my, my personal Let's Play before this. Um, it hasn't been updated for this one yet. Will always be the same civics than in the universe. And that's like, I'm a little concerned. But I think for this, it's going to be okay. There will still be some randoms. Okay, that's good. Guaranteed habitable worlds. I think leaving that is fine because there's, yeah. Maybe just one. Only one guaranteed habitable world. Should change the prefix, the ship prefix to mom. You're a hundred percent right. Cause yeah, I never change a ship prefix mostly cause I don't look at the ships like individually that much, but you're absolutely right. They should all be starting with mom. Okay, save. Done. Okay, let's go. Put up the density a bit. I, I think I'm okay with the base hyperlane density. It's super easy due to the scaling. It reaches max diff at the end game here. I thought it reached max diff at the uh, mid game thing, but we'll see. We've got a lot to learn um, with this new system. So, all right, we start in the Earth system. So like right, Mars and Neptune and all that, that's gonna be okay. One, three, six, four, seven, two, make, make. Oh, it's an asteroid, I see, yeah, asteroid belt. <laughs> Uranus. Um, before we take a look at our planet, although, my life, things are really different now. This is our, what our planet looks like. Let's zoom out and take a look at our situation. Now, one of the things that's different in 2.2 is the sector mechanic. Sectors, the old sector system is basically completely gone. Um, you no longer have to make sectors. You no longer have to assign plants to sectors. Um, wow, we have a really... What was our, our star cluster? I guess this is our star cluster instead of here. It's a little bit odd, but okay. Um, sectors still sort of exist as a geographical divider in things. And you can, if you don't want to micromanage everything, you can 
give a sector resources and have them make some stuff automatically for you, but you don't really have to. Um, one of the things is the sector gets named automatically from the first planet that gets colonized within a sector that becomes the sector name. So we're just going to call this like the local sector, uh, headquarters. Well, I, I don't know what our sector should be called. We'll just put this for now, but you know, it's our local galactic cluster. So um, that'll, that'll show up on some of the maps from time to time. Uh, headquarters over here, that's going to be okay. So new, new earth is our capital. We're starting right on the edge of the galaxy. I think as a corporation, we may have preferred settling a little bit closer to the middle, but it's going to be okay. Momco HQ, mom's house. Local branch, HQ sector, well, HQ sector headquarters. Okay, we'll leave that in there. That's going to be a-okay. Um, we do start with the basic of a construction ship, a science ship, and some fleets. That's pretty standard and normal. That's going to be okay. Uh, do I want to reorder these? Mm, actually, I'm kind of like this. I like having the ships at the, at the top. Um, you can uh, fold things by sectors here. So the planets under headquarters will be there, and you can collapse all sectors as well. So little changes to the outline are there. And the UI obviously is a fair bit different. Actually, the way I have my camera, it's actually <laughs> hiding part of the view for me uh, physically over here, but we're gonna be okay. So we still have energy credits and minerals and food. We also have consumer goods and alloys, which is different. Um, our science has sort of collapsed into one view over here. These are special resources there. And here's our empire size. Currently we have an empire size of 13. As a result of our districts, our systems, and our colony, we have an administrative cap of 70, which is quite high. So yeah, the base is 30. I guess I kept thinking of 50 because 50 is what happens when you have a corporation. So the base administrative cap is 30. Above 30, that's when you start taking, it starts, uh, science rates and everything start to go up. It's gonna be perfectly normal to exceed your cap. That's just gonna be the way the game is. You're gonna go above it by quite a lot. Um, but here, this gives us a massive buffer before those starts go, those costs start to go up. And as a corporation, our, our costs go up much faster than a regular empire. So having a higher admin cap is gonna be very, very, very helpful for us. Um, let's send out a science ship somewhere. So, Part of me is tempted to explore a local cluster, but I think what I want to do is sort of work my way towards some of these choke points as early as possible, um, just so that uh, we don't get blocked in too soon. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my science ship over here and then this way. I think that's going to be a fine start. We'll also build another science ship very, very, very quickly. Construction ship, we're just going to go ahead and... Oh, by the way, if and this is something I'm going to make like a standalone video or email paradox or something. What I really want with our construction ships is, you know when you like right click on a system, you know, you can go build mining stations. Okay, actually, let me back up. You know when you got a fleet and you hit the upgrade command, the fleet flies to the nearby solar star base. And if you don't have enough resources to upgrade the fleet right away, that's okay. The fleet stays parked at the star base until you've got enough resources. And then it starts the upgrade queue. I would love it if you could do the same thing with a construction ship where you can right click on a system, even like once a system gets explored, right and you can build like a star base it would be lovely to be able to right click and choose build all the things where it'll just fly there it'll first build the star base outpost for you because it has to build that first and then it'll go around building all the mining station and space uh, and research stations and if you don't have enough money or enough of the resources it's okay it just stays in the star system until the resources accrue to enough and then it starts that would be so much like they focused on 2.2 a lot to try to minimize micromanagement and to me that's something that desperately needs to happen to construction ships where you can just say listen i want you to improve this whole system even if you don't have the money for it now just just go there and wait until the resources come in and then do the thing that would be really really lovely um and hopefully something like that will come soon i'm gonna go ahead and get uh one series over here to be built up so we can get more mineral income to come in so a lot of the things that used to be minerals are now actually going to use alloys. Alloys actually get made mostly from minerals. Um, and most spaceships and star bases use alloys to get built. The exception is mining stations and research stations, which still use minerals. Minerals are very easy to come by. Um, alloys, yeah, you need a little bit of work. So we'll go ahead and pause for now. That's going to be okay. But let me bring up the speed to at least fast. 
and that's gonna be a good start. Let's talk about a planet over here. Actually, I'll pause again because we're gonna be doing a lot of chatting here, just in case you guys aren't fully up to date on what's going on. So the tile system, gone completely. No longer do we have a one-to-one -one ratio of citizens to tiles and whatnot. In fact, our starting planet's gonna start with 28 people on it, which is more people than used to be possible in the old system. People require a variety of things like housing and they also have jobs. Housing is provided by these districts. So all four of these are different districts. You can have agriculture, mining, generator, or a city district. The, the three base districts over here provide two extra housing as well as two jobs. So technicians which create energy, uh, miners which produce minerals, or farmers which produce food. The city district produces five housing and only one job, a clerk's job, which produces trade value as well as amenities. Amenities help people keep, keep, keep people happy. Housing, if you don't have enough housing, your people will be pretty miserable from that. Um, and jobs, unemployed people are very unhappy and tend to lead to crime. Um, and obviously jobs is how things get done. If you have unemployed people, well then they're not producing anything and that's pretty crummy. The total number of districts you can have on a planet is based on its size. So our uh, new new earth over here is the size of 16. It can have 16 different districts. Uh, currently it has five districts built already two agriculture two mining one generator um which means we should have 11 districts left over but we only have a cap of oh it's because we have blockers we have blockers reducing it okay so yes we currently have so we have every time let's say i queue up another generator district over here except i can't because i don't have the minerals but if i did this number would go down this number here is basically how many city districts are available. I think it's presented a little bit weird because effectively we have a cap of 16 minus three because of our blockers. So right now we have a cap of 13. And yeah, if you look at two plus two plus one, that's five plus eight is 13. How, that's how we get there. So right now we could have up to eight city districts. We have four. If I build another generator district, then this will drop down to seven because we could have fewer cities at this point. Um, so that's that. These are your basic productions. And then you have buildings. For every five pop you have on a city, you unlock a new building slot. And buildings tend to be where your specialists work. So workers will work in these three. And if we look at population, there's different ranks of, of people. So your workers, if we expand this, we have clerks, which are working in our city districts, farmers, miners, technicians. Um, so they're, they're sort of your lower class people. Well, slaves are the lowest class, but we don't have any. And then specialists mostly work in the buildings that are in those building slots as opposed to district slots. Artisans, these are people that convert um, minerals into consumer goods. We got enforcers that generate unity and reduce crime. We've got metallurgists that convert um, minerals into alloys. Researchers that con convert the commercial goods into science um and yeah so we only have those right now and then finally have rulers over here these rulers are currently these are executives and these ruler names get renamed because we're a corporation uh these rulers pr produce unity and uh, amenities and some trade goods over here so these are our actual worker slots and yeah so if we look our planetary administration um building uh, produces or has room for two executives. So that's our two executives are working in the planetary administration building and so on and so forth. So we got another building slot over here. We got a variety of different buildings we can build. Tons more will be unlocked with technology and you can filter it. Like show me everything that gives me amenities. Oh, hollow theaters and luxury resources or residences rather are both ways I can produce amenities. I, in my preview video for it, I was like, I'm not sure how planetary specialization will work if it's as important or whatever the same way. It turns out it is super important. Your planets, as we as we colonize planets, you'll see that there'll be a tag here for each planet. Our capital always says Empire Capital. When we build a new colony, it will say Colony, which is just sort of generic whatever. But if you focus your production on a particular thing, the colony type will change automatically. Let's say on a new colony, you end up with a nice balance of these various districts, agriculture, mining, and generator. It'll actually call the company, uh, uh, the colony, a rural planet. And on a rural planet, all of your workers, workers are people who work in these districts, get like, I think it's plus 2% production. Alternatively, if you just build a bunch of city districts, it will call itself an urban planet. And then on an urban planet, all your specialists, which are people who work in buildings, get a boost to their production and so on and so forth. If you do, instead of spreading out across all these districts, if you just spam a ton of generator districts, then it's going to become a generator planet or an energy planet. I don't remember what it'll be called. And it's going to give a specific bonus to your technicians. So specializing your planets is really good. I believe the exception is your empire capital because I think your empire capital is always of empire capital type. 
So it doesn't get any specialization bonus. On the other hand, you get massive boost stability and amenities and government ethics. So your capital can be balanced, which is okay because at the start of the game, you sort of need special, you need, uh, you're gonna need a balance of everything on your capital because you need, you need a little bit of everything to get started. So lovely. I think that's great. It's very intuitive and it feels good. It's like, yeah, freaking right. This is my farming planet. It's like, it's all farm all the time. All right, let's go back to unpausing. Uh, so I've got an empty um, building category over here. Um, but I don't have the resources right now. The the empty building thing is less of a concern than it used to be. Because usually that used to mean there's a pop in a tile without a building and that's really bad. That's not what it means anymore. Now this is just, there's an empty building slot. You don't worry until you get the notice that you have unemployed pops. That's no good. Now as soon as our population grows, we will have an unemployed pop. But then what we can do is we can deal with that, either a building a new district of some kind or a new building. And later we'll get building upgrades as well. If we look at population over here, you can see that our demographics are growing. Only one pop grows on any one planet at a time. So each planet will have one growing pop. The type of pop that grows is randomly picked um, from all the species and pops that you have in your empire, weighted by the number of them um, and different things like that. Oh, we've just discovered rare crystals for the first time. That's cool. That's going to be one of the rare resources that we can get here. We'll look at that later. It's you could also have a declining pop if for some reason, and you can also have building pops. You no longer spam out a bunch of build droid commands on your planets, and it's very tedious. Instead, you build buildings that then automatically produce robots for you over time, which is cool. Uh, we completed the construction of the mining station. That's good and lovely. Our construction ship is idle again. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to build another mining station here to get the energy on board. Although I got to say that's some really nice science tech. I never did pick the science. Let's do that now. Um, luckily in, um, in Stellaris, it does sort of accrue the points. So it's going to be okay. So some of this will feel quite a bit different. So over here, instead of researching, say the new type of lab. Um, yeah, I, maybe I did sit around with the science not accruing for too long, but <laughs> let's get it going. Um, uh, instead of upgrading a lab, in here we're doing, we're, our researchers will produce more of this type of research, which is cool. Lasers are the same. Energy grid is sort of the same. It's a building that still gives you a percentage boost to all your technicians. So this is going to be really good on an energy type planet, which is going to be lovely. I think we'll go ahead and take quantum theory right now out of these. I think that's going to be okay. Um, Off-world trade company, it works quite a bit different. We'll look into that soon. I think here, I think I'm going to take planetary unification for the monthly unity rather than research boost. I think the unity boost is gonna be nice. Um, and I think here we're gonna be quite happy taking the research boost. Not terribly exciting, but it's gonna be okay to get started. Okay, so we finally have the science dealt with. Whew. A little sidebar over here. M mostly the same stuff as before. Traditions are different. A lot of them have been rebalanced a fair bit um, for all kinds of different things, which is kind of cool. For us, I don't know what we'd pick. I don't think we'll go with expansion because we're not going to spam out that many colonies. Although, honestly, even for us, it would still be good. Get more administrative cap. I think we'll probably start with Discovery. Discovery has changed a little bit as well. Um, there's no longer the assist research mechanic. Uh, and maybe it's still unlockable by tech. I don't know. But that has been changed here. Okay, let's go to fastest speed. I think that's going to be okay. Kador system. So it's got rare crystals, although we need a technology to be able to take advantage of it. I think we'll go, we'll go Discovery. I mean, it's pretty goddamn solid. Boom. We built something. Boom. We built something. You guys will have to let me know how the sound is. Construction ship, please go. Yeah, that's two research stations. Um, and again, it would be nice to be able to right click here and say, listen, if I click here, clearly you can build one right away and then wait until we have another hundred minerals and build another one. I want that to be a thing. Uh, so we'll just go and get you to come over here and build that research station. It's going to be quite a bit of tech. Although we start with a higher tech rate than um, in previous to 2.2. I'm pretty sure these numbers are higher. I think the tech prices, the tech costs have gone up uh, sort of um, in, in pace with that. So a lot of the numbers are different. We're going to have a lot more minerals than before. But again, the minerals, a lot of minerals are going to have to be converted into alloys to build our resource spaceships. Resource scan complete. K-Door is done. Nice. We've got that one queued up, which I still think is okay. That's not a terribly exciting first system. We will check this to see if maybe we do want to expand in this direction really quickly. Um, it's got a planet, Desert World. Mm. But we'll probably come back and recheck some stuff nearby here. So the Weimar Drift, I guess, complete. presumably, yeah, this is a nebula, so we'll be able to get um, um, the nebula mining stations or whatever on our star bases. Ooh, discovery of alien life. Potential customers, you guys. 
Uh, age old question, if you can queue buildings without paying up front for not in a strategy game. Yeah, I guess that that is true. I'm okay with not being able to do that on a planet. But the construction ships are like kind of annoying micro. I think it's going to be worth building last research station here rather than rushing out and doing another star base. Now we have enough minerals. Oh, one thing that's changed. You no longer build any ships on a planet. Again, you are back to only building ships at shipyards. We will go ahead and get a science ship going. You can see a science ship costs 100 alloy. The colony ship costs 200 food, 200 alloy and 200 commercial goods. That's com colony ships, I believe, are effectively quite a bit more expensive than before, which is why starting with the private colony ship tech right away is quite nice, especially since you actually do start with a bit more energy production right away. So these private colony ships are effectively much cheaper than these bad boys. Although you do have the market over here, so you can buy and sell various resources if you are short on stuff. Customers, market research. Yeah, the dash class, the uh, private colony ship doesn't have a proper class name. This is a pre-release version, although conceivably the actual release version of 2.2 slash Megacorp um, will be, will still have that glitch in it. It's possible, but I'm expecting there'll probably be some sort of little patch. Ha Habitable world survey, of course, we'll go for it. There's no reason not to. Although we can get a little influence if we say no, but no, we'll, we'll go ahead updated. and do that. It's good for society research. Um, science ship is, that's a new science ship. So we're gonna get a leader. There is no leader cap anymore. Instead, you pay maintenance per leader um, based on your empire size. The bigger the empire, the more your leaders cost. Uh, we're looking for some for a science ship here. I think we're gonna take the anomaly research speed boost of 50%. That's really, really nice. So Conan Warley, welcome to the party. Uh, I'm gonna get you to come down here and that way. And this science ship here, I'm gonna go ahead and queue it to come down there. Excellent. How's their galactic market if you don't know anyone? So this is not, this is an internal market, complete. actually. The galactic market is something that happens once someone has met at least 50% of the um, empires in the universe, or in the galaxy, I should say, then a galactic market will appear in that person's territory. So being the first person to meet 50% of the galaxy is actually really nice because if you get the galactic market to be built in your territory, you get a discount. Right now it's just an internal market, which isn't as good of a price as the um, the galactic one. So we've got our, our construction ship is idle. I'm not feeling the rush to go out to Kador and then Castor right now. We'll see what else shows up in Castor. Hey, Alpha Centauri over here. There's gonna be a continental world for us to expand to. It's only size 14, which isn't great, but what are you gonna do? So we do have our first uh, points for tradition. I think we will unlock discovery. I like that. I do like the new domination system. It's actually quite nice. Uh, it's changed a lot. It's not about having vassals and stuff. Governor level cap increased, ruler level cap increased, capital buildings and housing give you extra housing, um, enforcers are better at crushing crime, and resources from workers and slaves increase quite a bit. Domination is a very sexy tree now, but who doesn't love science? Come on, let's do it. Done and done. And yeah, you're gonna do Planetary that, then you're gonna come over here. Complete. That's literally everything in Castor. Wow, those are crap systems. I'm really hoping that this star over here becomes um, becomes valuable. Alpha Centauri, it's got some minerals. I mean, we're gonna go and claim this system. That's for sure. I'm actually gonna move this construction ship to here in preparation to claim this system. <laughs> How close is our population? Okay, our population is about to grow and that person's gonna become unemployed. So we have to decide what we're gonna build next. It could be another actual building or it could be a district. Early on, I do feel like we're gonna want more alloys than we've got going on here. We don't need this many minerals. We're, we can afford to turn more into alloys. We already have one it's alloy foundry. It's Banana Kamana! Yay, Stellaris is back. I didn't expect this expansion to be coming out so soon. So a great surprise. I mean, they have been working on it for a long time, but yeah. I'm very tempted to build a second alloy factory. This will make Meritalurgist jobs, which will turn minerals into alloys. Right now, most of these buildings provide two jobs. Um, the commercial zone actually produces five jobs over here, um, but you'll get upgrades for these buildings. So, and as far as I can tell, most of them go from plus two to, to plus five jobs and then to plus 10 jobs. So you're not gonna need to have a lot of these. And in fact, you're gonna be able to have tons of jobs later on in these planets. Um, housing is still okay right now. So rather than build another district, I think I'm gonna go for another alloy factory because we really could use quite a bit more alloys for spaceships and star bases for our expansion early on. So. I think that's gonna be okay. We'll want a second construction ship soon. And then once we get auto um, auto serving, I'm probably gonna build, oh, see, there you go. We've got someone who's unemployed now, but that'll fix itself soon. Um, although having someone unemployed may, may lower stability, may increase crime. Um, 
yeah, because there's no leader cap anymore, uh, as long as we've got excess energy, we can get a ton of scientists to run a ton of science ships and just explore like mad. Check your planet modifiers. That's a good point as well. So our capital has no project planet modifiers. It also has no rare planetary features in this particular case. Um, there will there are no, a number of like regular features here. And so what they do is these things affect how many districts of each type you may have. We'll see that as we go and um, actually uh, scan these planets. Like we don't have that information. I guess Castor we would have it. So Castor is a size 19 planets. It can have up to 19 districts on it. Um, although right now, because of blockers, it's limited to 15 districts. So these, both of these blockers are reducing the number of districts by two, which is why only 15 are available. The rest of the features determine how many of this, those districts could be generators or mining or agriculture. And you can see Castor has very few, actually has a fair decent number of generator districts available. Um, but that's it. it. It can't really be a good mining planet or a good agriculture planet. So if you're thinking about specializing, and you should, because specialized planets give you more bonuses, Castor is clearly, once we can colonize this type of planet, this would clearly be a great site to just focus on city districts and have an urban specialized planet. Other planets, because of their features, might end up in such a situation. It's possible you might be able to find a planet of size, let's say, 15, where literally, just because of how things work out, you could have all 15 of those districts be, say, agriculture districts. In which case, that would probably be a good idea because Planetary you would probably get the, the bonus of having a farming planet where you would be able to get a bunch of extra food from your farmers. Wow, these planets suck. Big part of me is like, can we just restart here? Because this is just terrible. Um, Bernard Star would be a good energy planet. It can have up to seven energy districts later on. Two of them are grayed out right now because of the blockers, but yeah, that would be pretty good for that. Or again, might be another good candidate for an urban planet. We will see. Early on, I think we are gonna want um, a few play planets that are kind of centered around complete. Um, basic production rather than maybe the urban specialization. Uh, the construction completed on New Earth here, we've got the extra uh, alloy foundry. It is nice that it actually resorts this. Right? We built the alloy factory in this slot here, but it actually put both alloy factories next to each other in the list. Didn't expect that. 10 out of 10. Very nice. So we now have uh, room for an extra job. So I'm not going to rush to build another district yet, um, but we're okay. And now we are converting more minerals into alloys. Um, I think it'll only update at the end of the month. There you go. Because I was going to say we had plus 9 before. Now we're doing 13, but we have quite a few fewer minerals. But that's going to be okay. Mm hmm. Clear the slum, you got a free job for the slum guy. We could uh, clear more of the uh, things. Right now, all they do is they're gonna they're limiting my number of, um, of districts here. <laughs> Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Oh, that's so good. We do have excess energy, so I mean, I could go and do some of that right now, and, you know, because we've got time. Sure. Let, let's clear out the slums. Just get it started. So Alpha Centauri, this is a continental world. Um, sort of a balance of districts. Yeah, actually, so this 14, if we look here, that's a potential of 5, 9, 14. Literally all 14 of our districts on this planet could all be Anomaly basic detected. production. I think we are going to, we'll probably colonize Alpha Centauri, even though it's not very big, and make it a pure district planet for basic production. I will have to have some buildings, but that's going to be okay. Um, oh, we'll research the Anomaly. 150 days isn't too bad. So I could go and expand to Bernard Star right away, but it's such an ass system. This is really... Alpha Centauri is looking like pretty decent though, so that's going to be okay. Oh, it has a rare deposit. Do it. It do. Um, I believe, yeah, that's the Bubbling Swamp over here. Bubbling Swamp enables you to build a gas extraction well. You will need a technology for it, but I believe what the gas extraction well is, it's a specialized building with a specialized job that will let you produce exotic gases. That's like me after taco night. Anyway... Um, oh, the population, we're now 30 population on New New Earth, which means we unlock a new building slot. Very good. But we'll have to, again, we're going to have to decide, like, there's, here's the thing. The old system was so straightforward. Your population went up. It was a tile that had two minerals, so you built a mine. Your population goes up. It's in a tile with energy, so you build an energy district. Now I'm, like, literally paralyzed. When we get our 31th person, well, literally paralyzed. I'm figuratively paralyzed um, with indecision. Like, what do I build? What do we want? What's our priority? 
And I don't think, I mean, part, a big part of it is because 2.2 is new and we don't necessarily know the ideal build orders, but also I think it's gonna be present every game because it's like, there's so much different crap. I think I will build a corporate culture site. Um, you know, I'm a big fan. Any, any plant, any building that has a one per planet limit, you probably want to build one for planet. So culture, corporate culture site. This is your, this is your unity producer. This allows us, this will give us a couple of manager jobs. It turns consumer goods into unity, trade value and society research. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll get one of those. I'll, I'll put it in a queue. That's going to be fine. Excellent. Especially since we know Alpha Centauri will be a, a sort of a good rural planet for us. Um, new, 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 new earth can maybe be a little bit more centered on a, ooh, terraforming. Um, can be a little bit more centered on city districts, become more urbanized and have more specialist stuff going on. We got a new tradition available. I think I'm gonna go to boldly go first to increase survey speed um, rather than start with the science division. Um, boldly go leads to data bank up links, which gives us research station output, which might be what we're gonna to wanna to do and finish off. Although right here, it's kind of cool. Faith in science, it just lowers the upkeep of researchers which is kind of interesting. And completing discovery does give you the 10% science boost, which is good. So I think to, to, to boldly go is great. I love surveying. <laughs> give a spec about a month. Yeah, to figure out all the min max. That guy, that guy's awesome. He used to work for Paradox. He's a lovely guy. Now he works for, I wanna say ESL, and does like all their esports events and stuff. I should be reading these events out loud. My bad. All right, Alpha Centauri is taking a while. I guess we, we did uh, we did research anomaly here, which is too, but I love this system too. It's got the three, stars so it's a really interesting system to look at just gorgeous let's uh all right can't wait for 2.3 or 2.4 diplomacy upgrade yeah so they've they've wanted to do big changes to the diplomacy system you know for a while here but they had to wait again i would like a build all the things button here so it does the star base outpost the star base and then the mining stations all at the same time um but with 2.2 changing basically everything in the game, they're like, well, we have to wait to do a diplomacy redo until we've, you know, since we're redoing the entire economics of the entire game, complete. some things are gonna have to wait. All right, building complete, that's good. That'll keep you busy. That's excellent. Um, as soon as the system is claimed, we'll probably build a private ship to do that. Um, hang on, allow, what? why do you think something? Why did Twitch think this was a sexual comment? Paradox development style drives me nuts. I want to replay every time a major patch happens, uh, but then I hear what's coming in the next patch and decide to wait. Rinse, repeat. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's um, the same thing happens with uh, like all these games that get active development. Factorial, RimWorld, like boom! I found something. Ah, oh, found something. Excellent. That, that Sirius is a crap system too. I mean, I guess these are a little bit better because they are in a nebula. So at least we can build the nebula thing on the star base. We'll clearly need that tech at some point. All right, you're done over here. So we're gonna go and colonize. So colonize is a lot simpler than before. You no longer have pick a source planet anymore. The game is sort of smart enough. All it does is it shows you the list of, of species you have available. Now our list will be doubled because we'll have both the option of a colony, like a, a state colony ship and a private colony ship. So these two are exactly the same except for their cost. So our list will be double, but it's just like, listen, here's the list of all the species you've got. Who do you want to take? So much better interface than before. Also, you no longer have to worry about like what tile to plop things down on because that was such a, yeah. So we're going to go and we're going to pay for, with, for this with energy um, because while we do have a fair amount of uh, alloys and stuff sort of start up right now, we're going to be hammering this really hard real soon. So there we go. Do we call this Alpha Centauri Prime? Well, this is like, this is really gonna be a, just a rural planet. Um, again, we're gonna focus on a mix of all three basics. It's just, this is like, I don't know, something like Oklahoma. We'll, we can rename the colony later, so we'll do that. Was there a random button to name it as well? Not sure, I think there was. Anyway, so we're starting to build a, uh, a ship. So closest shipyard automatically queues the ship for you. And, and because you don't build colony ships on planets anymore, that's another thing. It's not planets to build a colony ship, it's just a shipyard. You could have a shipyard just orbiting some random sun somewhere with no planet there at all, and it can still build your colony ship, which is why you have access to all the races in your galaxy. It's just Canada. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll rename it to something like Canada. The star, we'll name it Star Canada, and some, we'll do something like that. Um, the mom Hubble, excellent. Some science, that's lovely. Uh, construction ship, please go and constructify all my mining stations over here, please and thank you. Remnants, intelligent life taunts with pointed absence, reads a popular news nest post on New New Earth. 
People of Mom's Friendly Robot Company are apparently finding some humor in the fact that lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals from other stars continue to elude us. Science officer Hydric reports that the traces found on Ridigus seemingly only add to an ironic twist to the situation. Okay. Alpha Manitoba. <laughs> Neo Canada. Oh, oh yeah, we could go with that. We can keep n naming things like this. Do we want to research this right away? Mm, not in Procyon, actually, because we might we might want to just settle it quickly. So we'll see what's actually here from the survey before we go and do this anomaly. Another bleeding edge technology discovered. Nice research bonus. Actually, uh, and the Unity bonus finished at the same time. That is nice and lovely. Um. Here's the thing. I would normally not really prioritize the hangar tech. The thing is, hangar bays are now super useful for star bases, as are all the defensive technologies in a way that they really never were before. I think we don't need afterburners right now, and the Corvette build cost is not that relevant. Grabbing that, it is actually going to be really handy to have these hangar bays on our star ports when we get there. Society research, we can make our farmers better and lots of new edicts. Hydroponics farms are not, they, they work differently than before, right? Because this is not a replacement for your farming districts. Farming districts are still their own thing. What hydroponics do, these are a building, not a district, but a building that opens up farmer jobs. So if you are dramatically short of food and you don't have enough agriculturally friendly planets, you can instead use your building slots as farming things which is neat, but not required for us. And then there's a hydroponics base for your star bases, which I was quite keen on. Hyper entertainment forums, um, unlock new building type. I think I'll just grab eco simulation here, make our farmers a little bit better. It's also really, it's also cheaper than this one. So it'll cycle a little faster. So we're gonna do this. Yeah, super specialized farming planets can definitely be a thing, 100%. Um, so uh, we're still waiting for Alpha Centauri to be settled. That's gonna be fine. Tropical planet. I mean, it's 55%. We could do it, but no. I mean, we only had the one guaranteed colonizable planet, uh, and it's probably Alpha Centauri for us. Mm -hmm. Right, you got the anomaly. New icon over here. This is trade value in this system. All of Planetary our um, planets will have trade value. Oh, there's some more over here, which is nice, too. All of our planets produce trade value. If we look at New Soul here, we have a trade value of 38 on this planet. Um, from pops and from certain jobs, like our administrators and, and managers and stuff produce trade value. And we get a bonus from high stability, which is nice. Um, trade value resources around stars are just generic things that like, there aren't something that are useful for production. They're just generic. Like, oh, we found a, 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 a plant that has a really nice smell that we can turn into perfume, or we found shiny rocks that people like to turn into jewelry, or, or you know, something like that. Um, we found animals that make really, really great YouTube video. They're so cute. They fall over all the time. We've called them pandas, um, that, that sort of thing. Um, and, but they convert into money, but we need star bases to collect that. Now we have a star base in orbit of new soul that is automatically like dealing with the trade. Well, it's the capital, so I think it works differently anyway. Anyway, tradition available. I think we'll go for the data bank uplinks, so our research station output increases by 10%. That's not gonna be much right now, but it's still gonna be worthwhile, I think. Um, so you're still checking out that system, that's good. You could go out, but I think I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna keep sort of looking in my local area a wee bit. This is a pretty nice system, but we might expand out this way first. This tech had better generate some revenue. What do we got here? Uh, well, there's our automatic exploration. Now, right now, we don't have enough stuff that necessarily we need to worry about the automatic exploration aspect of it, but the survey speed increase is good. Yeah, like, it's chocolate. really good. Ducky! Check Earth's planetary features, especially the Great Albertan Crater. I will take a look. Thanks, Ducky. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll double check in a second, and thank you for that. Um, research speed is always good, too. Although, to a certain extent, faster surveying... Like, again, not the automatic exploration, although that's handy. The faster surveying might be more valuable right now. Research complexes are also another building. Um, there, these are an upgrade. We already have a science complex that has two researcher jobs. This is an upgraded of it, which gives you five researcher jobs. We only need that if we need more jobs though. Right now we've got plenty of other ways to get jobs. Also upgrading from the previous research building to this one actually requires us to use these rare gases. It needs 50 rare gases to upgrade and it needs some as an upkeep. So we definitely don't need this right now. I'm gonna go for the research protocols, or the, sorry, the exploration protocols over here rather than the research. Although I, I think it's half, you know, six and one half dozen of the other. Um, Taki wanted me to check out the features on earth. 
Scandinavian Reclamation Sector, Saharan Irrigation Project. These are good names. Mesopotamian Urban Corridor, the Boss Watch Metropolitan Axis, Pearl River Agglomerate, the Mortanian Security Zone, and the Great Albertan Crater, which is what gave us some extra mining districts. Oh, that's so cool. I don't think I'd started on like the Earth, um, an actual like the Earth solar system um, before in this. Complete. So it's nice. Okay, science ship over here is done. Okay, you can go ahead and research the anomaly now. Um, and yeah, I think when you're done over here building your mining stations, I will go, here's a shift click, to go and expand Building. over here. That's going to be worthwhile we doing. I think it's probably time for us to get another construction ship. And even though these are sort of low value systems, I think we're going to have to claim them. Check the, they all have flavor text too. Wait, what? Anomaly detected. Yeah, research the anomaly. Oh. When Wait. Oh, this is actually a meteor that hit the Earth here. Unfortunately, it wiped out much of Alberta. Oh my God, that's hilarious. So when blah, 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 Satis approached Earth and triggered the Great Panic of 72, everyone thought that this was it. The big one had finally arrived. Fortunately, it wasn't big enough to cause an extinction event. Unfortunately, it wiped out much of Alberta. I just want to read the Scandinavian one. Reclamation efforts in the late 22nd century eliminated all but the most stubborn pockets of radiation and mutation levels are now at all time low since the containment breach. Sweden, what did you do? <laughs> it's probably the Paradox offices that were building some sort of new, like, wonky technology that went bad. 